Tonight on Edumacating Day for some Transformer stuff. But we do, do get to do a steelbook. Yay! I'm David. I'm Sven. I'm James. And tonight we're doing an unboxing for Transformers issue 21 to 25 of the graphic novel 26. hardback. 26. Oh, see, there you go. More bang for your buck. Right, so come on then. And we're doing a quick overview of the new steelbook for Kingsman the Golden Circle. Are we? We are indeed. Okay, so it's good to be in the editorial loop. Do you want to grab... The... No, no, no. <laughs> no, we do the do, do the dull first. things first. The dull things. <clears throat> I didn't know you were getting the steelbook for this one. Oh, yes. I like the first film. Is it, is it 4K or Singy or Lancy? Oh, yeah. Can we get rid of the box for? Oh, well. I must confess, I've, I, obviously I saw the first film. I haven't seen this one. Oh, I haven't either. Ah, well, that's good. But based on the first one, it was enough for me to want to grab hold of this. So, um, I have the collector's pins for this, which is great. Yeah, they did a collector's pin okay. for it, which was the... Because the, for the first one, they did the Kingsman pin. For this, they did a, a circular one. Oh, OK, cool. Yeah. Well, um, what we'll do now is we'll switch over to when I actually unboxed it earlier. When I got it, when it originally arrived, and I just made sure everything was there and it should be. OK. Here's uh, us opening it up. Um, I'm just assuming it is what I think it is, and sorry about the rainfall. Right, let's get this open. Okay, it's come through from HMV, and it is a still book, another 4K book, which is, um, there we go. That is, of course, Kingsman in the Golden Circle. Let's get that label up and out of the way. There we are. Right. So, yeah, exclusive only at HMV. It's an Ultra HD Premium title. Um, uh, that might mean it's got Dolby Vision on it, but uh, let's, not, uh, let's not assume anything. Um, the audio is Dolby Atmos and 5.1 as usual and 7.1 DTS. A bit of a choice there. Um, there's no reference I can see to which HDR support it is. So it could be Dolby Vision, could be high to 10, or it could be plus for all. <laughs> Let's see this. I don't actually have a Kingsman yet because the steelbooks were, even though 4K stuff was kicking around when it came out on home release, um, what I can't remember. Now. Um, the, uh, there hasn't been a book of the normal Kingsman on the film with a 4K in it, and there are 4K discs from the and the twain have not met yet. So there we go. So, different to style lab. Um, what not? Um, there we go. You can see that. Okay. Okay, now we've got the wrapping off. Let's uh, take out the J circle card, or whatever we're going to call it, because it's got a circle at the bottom. Um, as we saw earlier, there's the details of the extras and specifications and so on and so forth. Right, so there we go. It's quite a nice steel, but it's not usually the style I go for. But, um, yeah, quite cool. So look inside. Right, well there's my digital code, so uh, shockingly, I won't be showing that to camera. Um, right, so there's the um, 4K disc, very plain, and the Blu-ray disc, again very plain, there we go. And the internal artwork is, well, it's okay, I'm not going to go mental about it, but it's a nice steel book to have. Um, yeah, there we go. There we are. So we review the uh, the packaging with David. 
It won't be, it'll be a while before I actually watch the film, to be fair. Um, probably be this weekend coming. He says recording on um, the last Monday in uh, January. But there we go. Kingsman the Golden Circle. Now, someone, please do a steelbook with the 4K version of the original Kingsman in it. That'd be nice. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, that was quick. That was quick. Yes. I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The is right here. Here we are. So, um, Golden Circle. It is 4K Ultra HD and the normal Blu-ray in the box. Yeah. Um, it is a HMV exclusive. Um, and I haven't seen the film yet. So I <laughs> can't really review the film as such. No, but that makes reviewing the film really hard to it's do. It's quite a decent little steelbook. Um, but if you want to have a look at it. I will, of course, already start protecting it in one of the steelbook protectors. From Steelbook Central. Nice artwork. Yeah. yeah. Go on then, pop it open. I have the sense to have the, uh, the code not showing. Yeah. So let's make sure the code doesn't show. Yeah, that's the pin. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So both discs are there, and the case is a lot easier to get discs in and out of than the Wonder Woman one was. Yeah. So, which is all good. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Yeah, from if you've seen the film and you love the film, then this still book certainly worth getting. I don't know what the film's like. <laughs> <laughs> so when we say it's an unboxing review, we are literally, literally reviewing yeah. the box. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing it with my wife on on Saturday. It's Monday today. Can I pop this back? You, in? You're planning a film a week ahead now. It's the only way it's going to work. Yeah, she's, too busy. she's busy, bunny. My wife is actually studying to be a doctor at the moment. She's on an accelerated course, so she's actually doing what would normally be years one and two of the medical course. I tell you what, one. that shows true dedication to being a wife. She is actually taking a medical course to figure out what's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, after taking a uh, a six year course in uh, life sciences while bringing up the kids and still didn't manage to figure out what was wrong with him so the worst part is, is you probably already know <laughs> um no <laughs> secretly i think i might yeah my body's falling apart my brain's completely stuffed um to the point where i can't even get this back in his leading bag you want help i need help he does he needs not help. necessarily with this but i do need help <laughs> as the next section section of this show will we'll soon tell you Anyway, <coughs> anyway, moving on. Do For that. Let's move on to the robots in disguise. Right. So let's go with episode uh, issue twenty-two because no. that is in fact number seven. No, no, no. Let's let's. No, do, you do, want to do, do proper do issue by order. issue. Oh god, it's bad enough as oh, it is. Oh, okay. So twenty-one then is the smallest yeah. number there. There you go. Yeah, which is 21. why I put them in the order. They were did you? Oh order. well, yeah. I fudged that up. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. No changes there then. No. So, issue 21, we have Cliff Jumper on the front. We have imagery which suggests to me IDW. Let's see if I'm right. Is he the one who's afraid of heights? Yep. Cliff Jumper, no. Okay. That's He's called Bolt. Cliff Jumper. The one that's afraid that's, of heights is called Silver Bolt. Joke. Cliff Jumper afraid of heights. <laughs> the one that's afraid of heights is called Silver Bolt and he's a Concord. A what? Yes, he's a plane. He's afraid of heights and he's a plane. And also, the lead, and, also the, yeah, and also the leader of the aerial bots. There's a difference. When your own children ones. think you're sad, that's. <laughs> that, yeah, I think that's normal. Pretty much but, standard. Yeah, okay. To be fair. Yeah, to be fair. Um, but yeah, issue 21 is in fact volume 46 of the collection to go over my shelf of wonders up there. Um, it's IDW. Let's get it open. Um, there we go. Have a look at the artwork, shall we? Right, so it's IDW. It's something I haven't read, to be fair. Um, there's Magnus. You've got oh. a tear in your page. Have I? Yeah, me cover screen. Ooh, that's pretty crap. I think if I call so that's definite you, manufacturing error. Yeah, yeah, mind so. you, having said that, that might be too late because I think that's been sitting in a box for about three I, But we have video evidence of you opening it. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, true. I think you're okay. Right, things fall apart. Volume forty six. So, oh look, there's there's Menasaur. Um IDW's version of Optimus Prime. 
Who's that? Jet for? Right, okay, so let's go, skip through there, yeah. Um, there's there's good old Cliff Jones. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Yeah. Um, so the artwork is looking quite intriguing. Um, it's a style that I'm not Does all he try and force with. you to watch Transformers like he tries to force me to watch it? Jim. Hmm? Just Jim. ask you a question. Is right. Does he try and force you to watch Transformers like he tries to force me to watch it? No. You lucky bugger. He traps me and occasionally just sticks it on thinking I won't notice. It's not right. See, he, he, he actually wanted to watch Transformers the movie and react to it. He did it. Didn't you? Yeah, because... What was it you said? The right at the end? Bag. I can't remember. Michael Bay sucks. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's a fair it's assessment. Bad. It's a fair assessment. Um, yes. Mm. It's, it's very G1 inspired. It's... Um, Bumblebee's kind of slowly transforming from haha ha, um, his G1 self to his Bayverse self which is kind of weird um, but the other characters seem to be reasonably in line with G1 aesthetics broadly at least especially Magnus though um, but Magnus is very trick. strange in this universe turn off and just inhale the fumes from the magazine in Mexico far quicker oh, you didn't. <laughs> there we go what are you trying to do? Nothing. Don't do? worry about it. It's all good. There's more for our viewers at home. <laughs> anyway, Menace or... There we go. Um, yeah, it's, it's another part of IDW which I've really got to try and read and try and get into because it's, it's stuff I just... It, it rankles me and it's, I struggle with it. But... You know, IDW tend to take pretty good care of their verses. Yeah. Um, cover colour is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Prime. No, that's, that's Prime. It's proper Prime. But yeah, there we go. See, I don't like this split thing going on in Prime's chair. Does Mirror Prime have armour? Um, we could do, because in any universe I am very aware of, Prime and Magnus are basically the same small robot and then can use armour, so yeah. Power Master Armour, Star Armour. I was armor. going with Trek Mirror Universe. Yeah, armor. I know. <laughs> what are you, we what have you? our own Mirror Universe in Transformers called the Shattered Mirror, the uh, Shattered Glass Universe. I know about Shattered Glass Universe. Yeah. So, right. Let's pop that over there and we'll move on to the next one, which is issue 22, shockingly, after issue 21, but is volume 7. Oh, good. And is screaming from the front because there we have a certain protocol. Um, let's have a look. Is that Headstrong or Rampage? The harder they die. It's not Rampage, is it, idiot? It's Tantrum. Well, it's, it's, it's Headstrong. It's Headstrong. Um, or is it Tantrum? I can't remember. Help me. <laughs> He's um, the Transformers person for our show. Just thought I'd mention this. For yeah. some reason, I get the G1 Med Predator. The, the guy who runs the largest large. Transformers... Uh, ran the largest Transformers conventions in Europe. Give me a break. It was 1986. The, the Pelicon, not the Transformers Convention. Okay. okay. Um, yes. Let me, I also can't get into books. <laughs> there we go. Right, now... I should so do a joke there about teenagers having the same problem, but no. Rampage is a tiger. What's wrong with me? Anyway, right. Panther. What we, have, we haven't got that kind of time. I know. Um, there we go. And we've got a little bit of artwork at the bottom, which is already screaming. Transformers, Marvel UK. So I'm all right with this. Still questioning why issue 21, actually number 46. They're not releasing them in order to stop people subscribing for just the first few issues to get G1 original. Or IDW. Or yeah, exactly. Which, it's to stop people just getting their favourites. Yes. Oh. people to enjoy the entire universe. Or out back with a bit missing. There we go. Right, okay. Sample the joy. Yes. Bit of an introduction story so far. Oh, Prey. We started with Prey, are we? Okay. So this will be Optimus, basically. Um, yeah. Optimus is pretending to die. This time, pretending to die because. Um, oh no, I'm dying. He wants the Autobots to learn to function without him in case something happens to himself. Um, Prowl is aware of it. Um, I think I, Ratchet's aware of it because he builds a, a facsimile construct of Prime that could be blown up to make the...
So this is on Cybertron, and Decepticon's put around a rumour that he's in fact a Decepticon spy. So the Wreckers take, take him prisoner and are about to execute him. <laughs> Which really wouldn't go down well. Um, fortunately, Ultra Magnus, who was commanding the Wreckers at this point in time, realises something's up and gets Zeron to come and double check. Um, meanwhile, Paul Old Outback's got a hole in him and Prime's trying to keep him alive until the Wreckers come along and basically realise the error that they've made. Um, and then we end up with a storyline going forward where Prime and Magnus are teamed up and um, end up. Katie says hi. Hi, Katie. You owe me a pint. <laughs> um, of Coke. Um, so, yeah, you end up with, with some Decepticons' worst nightmare of Prime and Magnus teaming up. Okay. <laughs> Piling into Decepticon Fortress on a Cybertron. They're like, but he's been missing for four million years. Ah! It's quite funny. Uh, meanwhile, back on I Earth. I make noises, you get used to it. Back on Earth, Galvatron turns up. From the future. He's always helpful. Why is um, there time travel? Because it's science fiction. It's pretty much a staple at this point. Yeah, but when you put. When you put. Time travel it just makes the things much more complicated. Yes, you need to take your course in, in temporal physics at the academy. What? <laughs> <laughs> your dad is taking too much coke. Did yeah. you just say sniffed? No, I said done. How does one done coke? <laughs> Drink it? You can't explain that. You can't explain you that. Can. Yeah, I'm going to go with drinking it. Yeah, we'll go with drinking. He was the one saying sniffed. He evidently knows. He knows the double meanings. It's probably because I've actually sniffed the bubbles in front of him. <laughs> Just to say, I'm yeah. sniffing coke. Yeah. And to be honest, most of the time when I get a fizzy drink, most of the bubbles just splash into my face and I'm just like, great. And then we've my got, uh, basically, um, um, Straxus takes over Megatron's body, we think. That gets very complicated later on. Okay. Okay, and then we've got them trying to have a funeral for Optimus because they've managed to convince themselves he has actually been killed because of the Predacons rampaging through the forest. Okay. Only for him to basically uh, space bridge directly onto where he's supposed to be laid to rest, confusing them all completely. <laughs> what is Optimus now standing there? <laughs> it's a construct <laughs> to the point where he actually goes, hmm, I like the headstone, nice touch. Thanks. <laughs> it's like, okay, up. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, that's quite fun. Um, I was like, just out of curiosity, because yeah. uh, between the, the animated series and the comics, and it's mainly the comics, how many times have we killed Prime? Because I seem to recall there been a lot of Prime. Pretty much bits. straight after him faking his death. <laughs> this that's handy. Happens. That's, that's <laughs> handy. Okay, yeah. that's good. Um, and even though the... the um, creation Matrix is with him, um, which the Autobots really kind of got to know that. Yeah. Um, they chitter him his body into outer space on this occasion because some Cybertronian uh, Autobots are involved in the decision making this time, not just the Earthbound ones. So they'll nice. bury him, they jettison him into space, okay. which turns out to be a really bad idea later on. Oh, yeah, no, you don't yeah, say. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. like a plot point. Yeah. Ah, okay. so, oh, let's launch the, the Autobot leader with the MacGuffin that, that saves everybody's life into the, into the space. Really epic move. But there we go. Okay. So, issue 23. Yeah. Which is actually wrong 33. That it is. is. Okay. Which so, puts uh, it in IDW. Yep, uh, with Megatron's origin. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, why blurs on the cover? It's because Spotlight blurs in there. That would explain it. But there's also Spotlight Orion Pax. Hate I that name. It was blur. I thought it was Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> Botanica would do for that. Actually, oh, it's Cafe by me does a really nice Oasis soup. Soup? Yeah, yeah you get a Oasis. roll with it. Excuse me while I stonewall you. <laughs> <coughs> right. Does this normally happen? Yes. Yeah. Of course it does. So there's what blur. What were expecting? We know blur, don't we? He's blurry. Yes. 
<laughs> right, so uh, let's get into this. Um, story so far, introduction, that's going to be helpful, so I have a clue. Um, Megatron Origin. Now, uh, if I uh, understand this correctly, I believe that Megatron is from the minds of Kion, I think, in this version of the story. How the hell anything is a back story kind of thing in most comics? A black border. Really? Yeah. Mm. I was reading anime, well, not, I wasn't reading anime, I was reading manga, and whenever it was backstory, it was just black. It's, it's a staple for a while. Though. Shows I know nothing about comics, really, doesn't it? Um, not all the not all the companies do it, it depends yeah. on the storyline. Now, at least with this, I think they end up putting Megatron into the gladiatorial arena like he was in the UK comics. Yeah. Um, and then ends up trying to fight for the rights of... The, the little man. They yeah. actually use a caste system. Apparently, the Autobots have a caste system in this universe. It makes like, sense. Molds, castes. How else yeah. are you going to create robots? Don't like it. It doesn't sound very Autobot y to me. But Sounds incredibly sensible for a non organic life form. Let's see. You're basically a computer. Okay, what's your processing power? Well, then you go do this. Yeah, I suppose. Um. Very dark artwork, which would make sense in this kind of background story for, for Megatron. Um, well, let's face it, he wasn't going to grow up in a universe stroking kittens, was he? I assume he starts the Decepticon movement in this version of the, show, in this version of the universe as well. Um, because, because in the British comic, it was basically Megatron starting the Decepticons off. Mm. He's not wearing an Autobot or a Decepticon badge, though. Yeah. As far as I can see. Um, yeah. Maybe that'll be the last page. I think Orion Pax is some kind of police officer in this universe who brings him in or something. Um, Hold up. Yes, I have a few ideas, Decepticon logo. Um, let me have uh, Spotlight Blur by the look of it. Um, there is no hope, no hope, no hope. No hope. <laughs> um, yeah, it was quite good actually. Um, quite nicely done. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to move into. <laughs> I'm we're going to move into Spotlight or Ryan Packs pretty rapidly, which I think. I swear we just we went past it. Well, I did. We did we move past the start because both Blur and Ryan Packs seem to be kicking about together. This is the problem. They put cover galleries separately instead of at the start. Yes, yeah, so that Spotlight Blur and Spotlight or Ryan Pack. So. I assume they were one after the other, by the look of it. Oh, there we go. Yes, because nothing says let's get rid of the robot like tying it to a space shuttle. Hmm, someone didn't like a Ryan Pax much. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't cope with this version of Optimus because okay. in the original comics there was no Orion Pax. Optimus Prime was his title, he didn't actually become a prime by Fear the Matrix. Hmm. Um, it was originally written that there was only ever going to be one character that happened to, which would be the chosen one to defeat Unicron. None okay. of the others would grow and become different just because they're holding the Matrix, which is why Magnus didn't in the movie. Um, right. But they basically, the cartoon they series... They threw that out. Yeah, the cartoon series basically wrote in this Orion Pack story um, and, and threw out that that part of it, even though it's stated quite clearly in the film, that's what it was supposed to be. So yeah, the yeah. But Transformers is... fans have gotten quite used to discounting movies. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Definitely the last few. <laughs> the problem was is that the cartoon series season two, um, and they the, tied in. Yeah, well, they they kind of basically messed up with the. They, they were they were writing them side by side, but not talking to each other very much. Mm. Um, so it's kind of contradictory. So you've got in series two of the of the TV show, which was actually aired between eighty five and eighty six, they introduced some of the eighty six characters mm. who aren't in the in the in the film, but they do things in a time travel episode that basically undermine some of the things they said in the film and in the comics. So it was just like, mm. um, but there we go. There we go, Ryan Pax and 
Oh, he has something to cover his face to make himself look a bit primy. Right, then the cover gallery, which is required. Well, as long as he hasn't got anything to make him look more evil. Because there's nothing worse than prime evil. <laughs> You're almost right. There is nothing worse <laughs> There is nothing worse. Prime worse. being evil. It doesn't make any damn sense. Well, there you go. That's it. Hit yourself in the head with a book. <laughs> Number 24. Mm -hmm. Is that an option? <laughs> <laughs> ah! We're back to Marvel UK again. Space Pirates. And on the cover, Sweet yes, and on the cover is Hot Rod. Um, so, yeah, Marvel UK and a couple of issues of Marvel US as well. Oh, and some stuff from the annual, from the annuals. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, from just the one, the 1988 UK manual. UK were manual. the annuals separate storylines then? They just weren't reprints of the comics? No, they were separate storylines that tied into the comics but weren't reprints. Um. It's like me trying to explain the Terry Pratchett diaries to people. Well, there was um, there was a very important story in the second annual, which is State Games, which I'm sure I mentioned to you before. Mm. Well, um, like, mm. And that was a text story in the annual. And basically explained the whole Prime and Megatron thing and Megatron Sight and Deceptical. Because oh. um, basically the Autobot Overlord was in it and set up and... Um, Megatron refused to give him energy to keep him alive, let him die, and the bodyguard of the Overlord was Ravage. Joined Megatron as the second ever Decepticon, mm, basically. Right. So there we go, Space Pirates, artwork at the bottom which goes, screams Marvel UK to me. Um, oh, slightly naked RC. There we go. Um, oh, there's Fort Max. Introductory, blah, 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 there we go. Okay, so straight into the Transformers UK so comic. Anyway, right, this is the prologue for Space Pirates itself. What they've done is they actually have Retgar being tortured and tells a story about what's happened, um, and it turns out to be the big broadcast of 2006. So he's basically paraphrasing an episode of the TV show as being what actually happened and everybody knows that it's incredible it's exactly not what happened hmm. because this is the comic universe <laughs> so they're actually portraying the tv show as being fiction of the you know, fictional version fictional of the fiction comic version. version okay but then they've been doing that in the letters page for years at this point hmm. in the comic where they're basically even the, the, the letters answerer which originally was Soundwave, was literally saying, oh, don't pay, pay any attention to the cartoon series. That was just fiction based on the events. This is the actual event. <laughs> um, so, yes, we've got that. So they're basically... What looks like even simplified artwork down just to match the cartoon series a little bit. And we're moving to Space Pirates. Now, what's basically happened is that a temporal anomaly, because Cyclone and Scourge and Galvatron have been popping backwards and forwards through time, has opened up and is starting to swallow planets. Um, I've never heard a storyline like that ever before. To be fair, this is from the mid ages. Even so. Okay. Um, so now we've got the Quintessons going after Cybertron to try and take it over because their planet's been destroyed. Um, and the, the, the struggle ends up with the Autobots and Decepticons teaming up to repel them from Cybertron. Um, but they're also attacking uh, Autobot City um, and they managed to get the Matrix off Rodimus Prime and he reverts to Hot Rod. Um, so you got Autobot City. Yeah. I do not ever recall you mentioning to me about Decepticon Farm. No, no. There was a Decepticon um, holiday resort. Decepticon Retreats? Kind of. It was. A, it was. A, it was. A, it was actually an island, Club Con. <laughs> it actually turned out to be the top of a rocket. We won't go there. There we go. Um, but oh boy, Hot Rod manages to wake up in Metroplex from the centre of Autobot City. Handy. Yeah, six hundred foot tall Autobot. Handy. Should, yeah, suddenly, right. the Quintessons don't look like they're winning anymore. <laughs> no. He's, he's like, it's amazing things that just take yeah, naps on this planet. It's like when he, he's swatting starships out of the sky. It's like, um, which is quite fun. Yeah. Um, oh, that's Whoa. misprinted. Oh, that's quite a big misprint. Whoa. Unless it's meant to look like it's no, phasing it's really in and out of you. No, because even the text is. Yeah. Wow. Right, so that's two issues. Two like issues I'm going to have to write to them about. Wow, okay. 
or phone them up. Wow. Again, with the you have video footage of you opening yeah, it, going, what the sugar happened then? Yeah. Um, oh, that's actually quite painful. Um, that's what she so, yeah. said. What? No. No. <laughs> Is that inappropriate? Just, just no. Just no. Okay. Um, so, yes, we've got that storyline. Um, and essentially, oh, good God, oh my. there's more of it. Yeah, this this is fine, this is fine. This is yes. fine. Uh, this one we've got a fire bug. Um, basically the story of, of Space Pirates doesn't resolve until later on in Time Wars. Okay. Um, because, uh, well that's basically a setup for Time Wars essentially. Um, there's loads of skirmishes up until that point, but yeah, the, the temporal anomaly gets just gets bigger and bigger and bigger as well. Mm. Um, fire so bug does, does it get bigger or smaller backwards in time? It's not next gen. Okay. It's just getting bigger. It's just getting it's bigger. Just getting bigger. Okay. Because uh, that was one of the first few things that TNG did that was truly different was the fact that it got bigger backwards. Yeah. That was quite funny. Actually. Yeah. Until it got to the point where it stopped the nucleotides That's merging the and soup. Yes. Anyway, uh, Firebug, basically a creature who likes playing with the fire, ends up in the middle of a uh, American town. And a group of Autobots, they're calling themselves survivors, I think, at this point. Mm. Um, basically go and uh, stop him and send him to Mercury. Fair enough. Well, I'll have another quick happening. Yeah, another misprint. This is not good. Uh, dry run. Oh, right, okay, this is where... Um, yeah, this issue is not well produced. God, no. This, there's so many, so badly, many badly printed pages. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, badly blah, 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 pages. Blah, blah, blah. Um, here we have Megatron has somehow fallen under the influence of Shockwave, and Shockwave is getting him ready to deal with Galvatron by beating up Cyclonus and Scourge. And it actually because violence is often the solution. Decepticons, yeah. And actually, Megatron rips off Cyclonus's head, um, which creates a because Cyclonus moves through time without using matter displacement method. Accelerates the um, temporal distortion. Okay. Um, so yeah. Oh. Um, it, oh boy. God, God, this is really badly printed. This is it? really bad. Yeah. Um, so you basically end up with a battle between Galvatron and Megatron, mm. where Galvatron eventually convinces Megatron to join him. Oh. Watch out! Jet. Yeah, that's that's, that's a mess. Yeah. Um, and then we end up with some... Oh, oh! That is atrocious. Some stuff going on with Spike with Wiki and Fortress Maximus towards the end. Yep, I think I need to let them know that we've got some problems here. Wow. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, this has rushed through the printing process, wasn't it? Yeah. So we'll be burning that one. <laughs> Issue 25. Just because it's painful watching you try to yeah. open. Which is volume 43. Uh, all Hail Megatron Part 1, which is IDW. So, one year on from the events of Maximum Dinobots. Um, this is issues 1 to 6 of All Hail Megatron, which, if I remember correctly, is quite vicious. Um, and that on the cover is Skywarp. Okay. Right, it's quite why we have the Matrix at the beginning of All Hail Megatron. I knew no idea. Um, Maybe because it seemed like a really bad idea to have the day the Earth stood still? Maybe. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, you like that one? <laughs> ah, now, I remember seeing, I, I saw this as a sort of, uh, as a moving comic at some point. Okay. They put effects into it and stuff like that, which is quite cool. Um, well, uh, like a lenticular or...? It was a, it was a no, it was um. It was a, a digital comic where they actually you moved oh, from they, okay, panel yeah, yeah. to panel and then made it vibrate when you had booms and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Which is quite cool. And you could play your own music, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess what I did. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Going through that. The art was quite cool. That was Greatest cool. Hits. Uh, no, I'm not you. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That was Greatest Hits. Sorry, what was your favourite film ever made? Again? My favourite film ever made... That you said in an episode? Oh, did I, did I actually listen? This is my favourite oh. ever, or just at the time? Oh, but you did. Uh, well, it didn't matter whether it's, it was at the time or not. It's still, you, you it's still in my top ten. Mamma Mia. 
Yeah. It's a great film. I'm really looking forward to the sequel that's out this year. All right. And there we have... Oh, good God. And there we have Frenzy um, using his abilities without using power drivers because power drivers are stupid. Um, yes. Oh, and now has a drill thing going on. Don't know what that's about. Okay. Right. Um, the art works actually quite nice. I quite like this art work. A devastator. The most powerful robot. You should really. Um, Astro Train. Oh, there's Megatron. That's most definitely Megatron. Based on the cartoon series look of him. Um, but again, American produced stuff tends to follow the cartoon more than anything else, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Bumblebee's running around with, yeah, with, um, with uh, blue eyes. Everybody's got blue eyes on the Autobot side again. Uh, um, no, what's this? Bumblebee getting a new body? And new troops to come out? No. Um, actually, he does. I think he ends up being the leader of Cybertron. Okay. Um, yeah. The artwork's not bad. It, it, it's quite nice. Uh, that's an archie type ship. Um, I don't know if they try and Spaceship. introduce some of the ideas that come along later. Oh, Jazz is in this. Apparently Jazz leaves the Autobots and becomes a, 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 um, a neutral. That's because he's not care. all that. <laughs> he is all that Jazz. I'm sorry, he is. Jazz hands and all. Um, Can we put a quick link in to right, um, Rachel Bloom's Jazz song? Because that was amazing. Do I have to? No. You don't have to, but <laughs> Google it, guys. It's amazing. Oh, and there's, there's uh, Rose Buster, I think. Very of the characters kicking around. Again, as we go through, it's obviously all done by the same uh, artist, Bombshell. Um, yeah. And no, it, it's not as big a Bombshell. I, I'd guess it was the same artist. What the hell are they doing to Sunstreakers? I'm just screaming like that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, hot Rod Sunstreak. Oh, Sunstreak is getting a new body and yeah, a new troop to come. Um, yeah. Is it more Sorry. complicated Sorry. than the software patch? Yeah, definitely. Oh I think God. I'm getting high on the fumes as well. No, everything's actually starting to move around. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that's yeah. Cool. I've seen that. I've seen that as a poster. I like that yes, one. That's quite cool. So. Did they ever do a Transformer that was the camera? Yeah, it's reflector. Yeah. He's actually three Transformers combined into one. Um, it was an old micro-change toy which they did as a mail away in the States mm. and was in the cartoon series but we never got him over here. Mm. Okay. It was actually sold in a normal box in Japan. Issue it was 26. on my get one eventually list and what try and avoid all the 52? KOs because there's huge numbers of KOs on them. Yeah. So, issue 26, what volume is it? 52. 52. Show you something your dad doesn't look. Nails. They're great things. I don't know why your dad doesn't like them. Anyway, I like right, so IDW again. Um, this is Mike Costa and James Roberts doing stuff. Um, the Cyber Why of the Dead Universe. Hang on, hang on, Costa, okay. I know that name. The title. What, what else did he do? He's done other Transformery things that were. Mm, quite possibly. James Roberts is the biggie, though, and that would be fair. Okay. The title um, of this. James Roberts actually started writing Transformers stuff in TMUK Handlings. <laughs> oh, right, okay. And then it became his job, and he's now basically. It goes Bob Budiansky, um, Simon Furman for the original series, and now basically James is in charge of Transformers full stop, as far as IDW is concerned. I cool. think. I'm not in charge of Transformers. Storyline wise, anyway. Anyway, right, so this includes an F. Well, it's called The Death of Optimus Prime. I think Death of Optimus Prime is actually quite a short story. Um, there we have a very. <laughs> Bang! He's dead. It's, it's quite. A <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it did not take as many panels to do uh, this as we thought. The, um, the artwork on the front <clears throat> of, of Optimus I'm, is a bit. That's that. Mm, what's nice? That that whole sequence of children's toys that I hate. It's that style. Hero Rangers. No, not here. I can't remember the okay. ones that you know. You pull them back, and they auto transform, and they're hideous. Right. Okay. What were they? It, 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 you're the transform. You're not narrowing it down much. 
Uh, five years ago. The rat, the rat like five years ago. Is it something to do with the Bay movies? No, no. You're trying to remember things. Oh, you mean the bot shots? Bot shots! That's the... Wow, you actually remember something from five years ago. Thanks a lot. <laughs> anyway, Death of Optimus Prime. It's worse than that, he's dead, Jim. Doesn't take much. Leave that alone in space. Okay. Some right, one. this is quite nice, aren't it? This is really quite nice. Um, yeah. Again, it's IDW reverse stuff, so again, I really must try and get into it, but. Struggle for you. You know what might help you? What, reading it? If you bought them in some sort of hardback volume kind of concept. That's basically where I was going with it. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that might help. Yeah. That might help, yeah. yeah. Um, so, this is quite cool, uh, artwork-wise, though it does seem awfully... Because we, we have a cunning plan. Let, let me tell you about our cunning plan, right? We're going to do something that nobody else on YouTube ever does. We're going to unbox and review things without having a clue what's written in them. <laughs> it's a great idea, isn't it? In. It's going to really make for a show where you just say, oh, I don't know what this is. I haven't got a clue what this is. Oh, look! No! <laughs> Dude, do you reckon that'll running, catch up? Running, do you think that'll I, become a thing? I'm running out of, of, of like the original G1 stuff, so it's just going to get worse from this point onwards. Um, how much worse can we, How many issues of this thing is there going to be? I don't actually remember. Well, first of all, it's book book one. Well, when you go to volume whatever, and we're only on issue 26. Um, I mean, this is volume 52. So there's at least 52 so issues. we're halfway through, okay. based on that. Um, but I don't know whether they'll extend it further because of all the stuff that's but been they've produced. been producing in the meantime. Yeah. Depends how many people have, have already gone with it. It's yeah. like us with the Eagle Moss starships. Yeah, let's do the Battle War 359. Why? Because there's 20 ships there we can use. Yeah, come um, Let's do concept art ships. What are those? About 10 more issues. <laughs> Yeah, let's do them as bonuses. Let's do them as bonuses. Well, we don't have to put them in the And then they the sell out anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of iron hide in this. Um, Pax Cybertronia. Yep. And then we have the sketchbook of the, some of the concept artwork and so on and so forth, which is quite nice in these volumes always. And then the cover gallery, which to be honest, I think... Well, no, again, it's lovely that they do that. Although that's yeah. really small. I really yeah. feel they should be full page. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing. I'd, I'd much prefer if they did a few more pages than actually did each cover as a full yeah. size no, page. No, I'm with you on that. But, you know, maybe I'm just a bit weird. No, Sven. Sven. Uh, I tell you, we'll take a poll with all of our viewers now. For any of you who think he's a bit weird, this side. For all of you who know he's very weird, this side. I can do polls on, on YouTube, but don't, that's going to blow don't, back in your face. That'll be, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I think I've got to contact Hachette. Yes, I think you do. Because you had a couple of issues there which were pans. Yeah. Yeah. So issue twenty one and twenty four need replacing. So are you any are you waiting to complete the series before you have a, a clear run at it? Or are you gonna start yeah, actually sure. reading these independent little bits? I'd rather do them in order. Um <laughs> you're gonna wait to the end to do it. Yeah. Oh god. Something to read when I've retired. Do you, do you know what's really model making Do you know what's really, really funny? Well I actually did that when I was Twelve, I think twelve, when Marvel released the Ghostbusters series. Oh, okay. I actually waited to complete it before I read them. Fair enough. I was like, I don't know, 70, 80 issues, something like that, before I eventually sat down and read them. Wow. Glad I didn't do that with the 332 issues of the original Marvel UK Transformers comic. That would have taken you a while. Sure. Yeah. Do you know right. So. Do you know what I feel like we're going to do for the last issue? What? The, the end? One. The second one, yeah. Be better, right? Yeah, be better, yeah. yeah. <laughs> be like, swipe. Um, the one thing they need to do a special of is Generation 2, because they won't publish it as part of the main run because it's not Generation 1. Okay. Um, and then the question is, do they then go off and do everything else that's not G1? And G2? They might do, you never know. It depends how many people keep own, yeah. subscribing to it. There's okay. enough Transformers fans in the world for them to consider it. Yeah, true. So are those your parting thoughts? Those are my parting thoughts. Okay, my parting thoughts are... Oh, good 
God, there are still going to be more of these for him to do. Yep. <coughs> well, thank you very much for watching. You can subscribe to us here on YouTube. You can follow us on both Facebook and Twitter. And of course, there is the Flickr account. Thank you for watching and good night. Bye. Bye. On tonight's episode of Educating Dave, ta da! Transformer books, enjoy. Don't forget. Shit. On tonight's issue. <clears throat> three. Two. Just do tonight and then list all of them. That's it. Dave. Did you just say Edumacating? Edumacating, yeah. Well done. Edumacating Dave. Right, so right, let's put the phone on silent so it doesn't keep chirping you. Right. Uh, so we're back into looking at comics as if they're in an earthquake. <laughs>